First thing I do is I take off all indicators. I just look at that market because that reminds you of the things that you know about markets that you've experienced, that you've traded, the patterns, um, and adding indicators straight away sometimes removes, you know, that initial instinct <coughs> that a lot of us think that we can't use anymore because of computers and you know how easy computers make things. Now um, today I'm going to use. In the tradition with most of our presentations, I'm going to use one day of trading. It's a two minute burn chart from, I think this was the 8th of January. Why this particular day? I chose it on purpose, of course, because it fits what I'm trying to, to explain. But most importantly, because it has most of the market conditions in one day. And the whole purpose of this, of this presentation is to try and show you what can be done in trading. Intraday tra trading is fantastic, it's cheap. Uh, it's accessible to everybody, and it's also a space that most institutions don't want to be in. Uh, it's a very low scalability. Um, it's, it's something that is still our, or at least the smaller guys' domain. And, uh, and so I wanted to concern this. So here we have the two minute bond, and classically in this, in this day we have the four principal market conditions. So we have uh, over there on the very left an opening gap, <coughs> sometimes very difficult to deal with. Uh, then we have uh, a nice period of trend, which comes to an abrupt halt. Quite painful, especially if you consider, you know, look at the scale. Obviously, you know, if, if you imagine this could look like a, a you know, multi, multi-day, multi-month kind of uh, setup, I and mean, you've got, you know, hundreds of, of bars there. But look at that one bar, and that will kill, you know, your, 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 your whatever system you use. That bar will kill your system. Then you have a period <coughs> of uh, mean reversion. Again, classical, you will see it. If you just ignore the, 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 the bottom axis, it will look like any hourly, monthly, daily. It's the same pattern that, that you will observe <coughs> sorry, over all kinds of time frames. Um, so then you have the, the, the best, you know, the trend, you know, the period in the market that pays for all your mistakes before. Um, this is fantastic if you get, can, can get on it quickly and if you can hold on. Of course, it doesn't happen all the time. 
um, especially not an intro day. So, the first thing I do is I take a simple moving average. Um, it's banal, uh, but it works. Uh, and we'll try and show you why something as, as, as simple as this works and, and how to use it in conjunction with, in conjunction with other methodologies. So here, you know, you have a beautiful entry area, um, you know, four or five stop and reverses that you expect in the inversion period, and you finally enter yourself and you capture all the gap. <coughs> Problem with it is a stop and reverse moment. Here you're giving away, you're giving ticks back to the market. Um, and on intraday, these periods of mean reversion can be very, very expensive. Um, and also, because of that, one bar it's taken away 50% of your entire morning's profit. One two minute bar, which is huge. And that happens over and over again, especially in the internet. You know, you've got a fantastic setup, it looks beautiful. Something happens, it doesn't have to be anything specific, it doesn't have to be a figure. You can, you can plan for a figure, you can be out for two minutes before. It could be, internet, it could be a big order, a block, basis trades, it could be intervention, you know, whatever market has, it has its idiosyncrasies that can push it by a significant amount, in a very, very short <laughs> amount of time. And you'll have no idea until you get your fill on your stock. Right. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so basically here I just summarized the, the, the physical cost to be involved in those couple of moves. Um, and taking this, again, this very, very simple strategy as, a, as an example, just to give us a couple of figures. You know, we, we, it costs us six ticks to get long out of 34 ticks, and 34 ticks is the maximum possible excursion. So if we could buy the low and sell the high, probably none of us would be here. We can't do that, unfortunately. You know, a few people tell you they can do it, but you know. um, similarly, on, on the delta, in, in quite surprisingly similar ratio, but it's cost us about 11 ticks, to be sure, just using the basic strategy, um, which is a large proportion of the absolute maximum you could have made on that two, two period day. So here I go into a little few specifics. You know, we look at our, our true entry point, so the close. I mean, obviously, like with most systems, you always have, you always trade on the close of the bar. Most systems up there are always up there on bar close. And so consequently, for this example, I've always taken the closes, and then I've looked at where they're open. If they're open, it's still where the closes, then we've taken that position. But this is just an example. But you can see here that that bar, takes so much of your profit. So on a simple strategy, like an EMA breakout, your classic, I mean, sorry, if, by the way, if I'm using terms that, that you understand, please feel free to, to, to raise your hand or you know, stop me. Uh, we'll, we'll have some questions afterwards, but I mean, I presume everyone's familiar with the, the, the principle of, of, of a breakout on an EMA. Uh, so you have a, a moving average or, or, or a level of any kind. So you, you, you open below that particular level, you close above it, and that's your that's your uh, that's your entry. Um, so here, you know, on, on on the downside, we see that often that stop and reverse period. You know, we do take quite a substantial amount of the uh, of the trend. You know, this, this doesn't look horrible. Well, let's start making it a bit more complicated. Um, now, this is I did this on purpose. This looks fantastic. Um, you know. It's, uh, it's the basis of so many different methodologies and so many interpretations of uh, market dynamics. And that's basically that boils down to crossing the base. There are so many methodologies that are based on this similar kind of process. And the thing is that on a long-term chart, they look absolutely fantastic. They look great, you, you, you run with the trend, and if the EMA is different between the EMA is large enough, it keeps in the trend for a very, very long time. The problem is that the difference in the EMA is very big. Either you get a long period of stops and reverse, or it takes you a really long time to get into the trade, and it gets you out too early. So, not one of my favorite strategies, uh, but had to include it because it's a very, very popular way of looking at the market. And this is the problem with, uh, with the crossing EMA. So you say to yourself, okay, crossing EMA is, well, the they sort of solve my opening gap. <coughs> so you know, I, I, I can short it there, it recrosses north, along very happily short again. 
So I'm, again, on the chart, it looks fantastic. The moment you trade it, or you look at the actual bars in which you enter and exit, it's, it's a terrible system. Um, it, well, at least for this stage. I don't want to, for someone will raise their hand and say, you know, I've, I've bought three houses on the back of this. Um, but, uh, you know, you have a breakout there. And by the time you reverse, I mean, the market's straight through your level. So you probably would have been stopped out anyway. Um, again, very popular, but the, the simple EMA, well, much better. Simple breakout, one indicator. You have three indicators. This is the button, so it's like two German colors. Um, again, treble EMA looks even better because you can say, you know, you can do, in effects, I think they call it a crocodile system where you go through the various EMAs and you, you enter at every level. Again, looks great, same problems. By the time you're in the train, especially for intraday, where, where the, 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 the net moves aren't very big. You know, you have to try and get in, you have to try and get out a lot faster than you have to go daily on trend followers and things like that. Trend followers, you can take your time, because you expect the move to be substantial. Intraday, the moves can be, you know, I don't know, 20 ticks. You know, if you can take out five ticks out of 20 tick day, I think you've done reasonably well. Right, so again, here we look at why Trevor EMAs are uh, 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 can still be useful is going back to the initial principle of the breakout rather than the physical cross. So looking at sorry, guys, looking at the, the breakout rather than the cross. I mean, see, there's there's a, there's a big difference. There's eight ticks of difference per signal on the on the crosses. Very easy to program. Very easy to do by hand. And I tell you, and some of these things look complicated. But their updates are about closes. I mean, you could run this in Excel. Yeah. It's, it's really not complicated. Now, the problem is the exit. So how do we deal with the exit side? So if we, if we were to use the, uh, the, the, the breakout, we would have stopped the reverse at the end of that bar. And that bar kills our yeah. And that's why I chose this day. Because you have what looks fantastic until that one tiny little bar. You know, and that, that bar isn't, in, in the biggest scheme of things, isn't very big. Intraday, it's huge. So, on the left hand side, I tried to summarize the costs. Um, but then, what about using our breakout as an entry, but the EMA levels as a trading stop? So, in the case of this problem, well, we've saved quite a substantial amount of our of our uh, of our money by uh, using the EMA as a trading stock. Um, again, for the trend bit, uh, you know, I'm sure you guys have enough experience not to not to struggle how to manage how to deal with the last trend of the day because it's what everyone loves to have. It's very easy to solve. You know, that, that, but you probably struggled to find an indicator that wouldn't have brought you short there um, and kept you short for a reasonable time. I'm sorry, can I, can I ask, how did you calibrate the periods of your EMA? Did you just fit to the page or just, yeah? Sure. <coughs> I'm, I'm it's an example. Okay. You know, what, what we're trying to look at is, you know, something as simple as an EMA breakout versus, you know, the crosses, the, the much more structured kind of models for intraday purposes. Um, here, uh, we're looking at the... Uh, uh, I'm lost myself now. So here we're looking at the specifics of the, uh, of the mean reversion part. And again, you know, we have to be realistic on what we go in. You know, when you have a breakout on a short day, you'll have a higher bar as an entry. Um, so, the rules for, for this bit are very simple. <coughs> Your entry on an EMA cross, a fixed stop, because you need a fixed stop at the beginning. Because your EMA is effectively your signal and your stop. So there has to be some way for you to let the market move away from your signal before you start using it. Your EMA is your trading stop, but it's also your signal. We've got to say, okay, what is going to happen to allow us to use a stop um, of 10 ticks, what we would say. And what, what's going to happen to trigger 
the trading EMA rather than the fixed stock. And we just suggest something reasonably simple, which we, we use all the time. Um, when the unrealized profits becomes the size of your stock, you move to your secondary uh, stock methodology, in this case, the, the trading EMA. Um, and, and, and so on and so forth. And, and the EMAs will follow your trend and take you out of your position much more sooner. The benefit of having something like a triple a EMA is, of course, that you, know, you have the possibility to come out of, of three different kinds of moves in, in that particular market. So if a very small reversal will take you out of the faster EMA, but it needs a substantial reversal to take you out of the third EMA. So you, you, you try to keep yourself a little bit longer in the market. Um, now, Right. Any questions first? Can I have some? No. Uh, <coughs> what, in your opinion, what's the best uh, uh, number uh, of uh, periods you have to use your uh, stop, uh, trading stop for the market? It's a super market. I mean, look, uh, we ran a system called Data. I used to, we used to do all the market in the world, um, which was based on a mid fib scalp design in. in and out of for some kind of trading challenge. Really then on translation, five lines. We had a 15 tick trading stock. Same methodology as this. <coughs> which survived until 2007. Yeah. Unchanged, unvaried trading every day, every day till 2007. August 2007, the world changed. I don't know how many people traded guns at the time, but I remember from uh, full, full 415 onwards, it was just nothing, nothing in market. And um, I mean, at the time, I remember I had reasonably large order threats. And you know, for the Bunds, a 2000 order, uh, pre August of 7, so it's almost in the office. Right? And I found myself literally being 90% of the market after 4 o'clock for a 2000 order. Well, how do you design for that? You've got to say to yourself, look, I just have to look at the market, I have to make an arbitrary decision on what my stop should be. Um, and you can make it complicated. You could do the function of an ATR, so you can let your stop see the dynamic of that. But ultimately, you know, it's 10 ticks works for the booms, 15 ticks. Now, on the trend folder, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go for anything less than 30 <coughs> ticks now, because the, the, the moves are very, very sharp and very, very small. So, uh, but we think to intro. In intraday, I think 10 ticks are fine. 10 ticks are fine. Because the, your expected move during the day isn't that huge. But then it's not, you know, you're going to have to work to get it back. Yeah. Anyone else? You said 30 ticks if you go for a longer <coughs> term trend, like yeah. for a daily trade in yeah. the world. Yeah. Like yeah, I mean, that, that was getting there. And then even after August 2007, it became a 30 ticks stock. And, and, and it behaved then identically to what it had. You know, the previous seven years with a 50 tick stop. So in a way you're trying to curve it a little bit, the moving average to see if you will be staying in the trade or not, not in the bad sense. Well, the moving it's average shouldn't make too much difference. Mm -hmm. If it does, your system is fragile. So if you run a 200 EMA and it gives you 10 every month, so 10, well, 10 takes, 10,000, 10, um, and then you try a, two, a 180 and a 220, mm -hmm. and your results vary by quite a lot, your system doesn't work. So you, you can move this principal indicators by, by say, 20%. Your results can't move by 20%. So the 30 ticks will be the initial stop. After that, you just trade mm -hmm. with the moving yeah. average you always use, yeah. and which is fixed. Well, it's fixed with the EMA itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, the, yeah. Okay. So it's a function of your entry. You're not going to change the EMA to care for it. No, but I mean, we're concentrating on intraday. So in intraday, you would, you would, you would want to, you, you don't want to lose more than 10 ticks. You know, simply because on the days that it doesn't work, and which <laughs> they will be, um, you simply can't make that up. There, are, there, are, there isn't enough of a move during the day to then, you know, reset to, to if you have especially more than one system, it, you know, you have to be able to uh, live through every single system that you still have. And if you get stopped out once in the day, and unfortunately, say, in the morning, will you try to put on another trade to find a signal, or will you just give out yeah. that day again? You can't make money if you're not in the market. You're willing to risk maybe another 10 ticks or another yeah, 
you know, if you're running, say, you know, going slightly up subject, if you're running a proper long-term trend funnel, when you're trading, you're spending most of your time in stop and reverse. You're getting beaten up every single trade. Why? Because you've got to find the trend. Once it's in a trend, you don't trade anymore. You know, you're just waiting for the trend to finish and whatever indicators you've chosen to tell you it's time to get out. But you're not trading. And you're only trading when you're losing money. I was trading two dollars. You're taking quite a beating. <laughs> yeah. Have you got a specific uh, amount of trade that you would take before it quits? I can probably do it on the PL side rather than, than, than the amount of trades, yeah. I mean, it's got to, you've, got to, you've got to have an anchor point. Um, okay. You know, you've got to say to yourself, you know, I, my day is worth, you know, for argument's sake, 4,000 euros. You know, for a smaller trade, like, that's, that's, that's my day. You know, you, you can plan, you can prepare, but ultimately you have to have, you know, a, a limit at which, you know, you close down your, your PC and go back home and play with the kids. Um, because if not, you 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 know you're prepared to accept volatility. You've designed for it. You want volatility because that's what makes you money. Um, but then there is there has to be a stop in the game. Um, and and the more disciplined you are, the better you are able to come back the next day and start again. And just one more thing. Um, your you say ten ticks. Is there any way that you check the market before yourself for um, understanding <coughs> if you can get that right? Well, this is this is the thing. Well, what have we what have we learned about just very very simply? This produces almost as much as that. So we have one EMA breakout versus a treble EMA breakout with a complex trading stock, yeah, and the two <coughs> produce almost the same amount. So the your answer is. Is 10 tick better than 11 or 9? Run it, find out. You know, you can have, you, you have, nowadays we're so lucky because we're, we're, we're full of phenomenal, you know, computational tools. I mean, you can do this stuff in Excel anyway. Uh, you know, it's not sufficiently complicated when you can't. Um, so just, just run it and see if it works, you know. Um, I've seen some crazy systems um, with some crazy profitability, and some of them we've run, in, Surprised. Well, we have one system, and I'll go to back to that synchronicity of drawdowns. And one system that we ran as, a, as an index based for break um, in Euro dollars. And we knew, we know, that the moment that enters positions, we're going to get rinsed everywhere else. Because it just it was so beautifully synchronous. The moment it went in, it was, oh, yeah. you know, every, all the our beautiful little profits, you could just see And everything went red, and our little, <laughs> our little Euro dollar system. When was it? And, and, and that's the beauty of you know, the, what I'm trying to show here is that you know, a collection of imperfect systems can be much more satisfying than uh, that. At least I think so. Um, than one super complicated system that you're always working on, you're always trying to get better. Um, and it's very, very hard. Uh, and I think that so then do you use different systems for different market conditions? So absolutely, absolutely. So, so we're here we're trying to solve four market conditions. Yeah. Yes? We're trying to solve the, the, the opening gap, mm. yeah, where suddenly the market's just moved dramatically since the close. The, the, the trend that looks fantastic until you hit brick wall. The mean reversion part, which you have no idea what to do with. And the trend, which is absolutely fantastic, which you, know, you would love to have every single day. But then a whole day of range bounding would give you the same kind of you have to have four different systems. Yeah. And, and the beauty of the entire <coughs> day is that it has all four conditions, all in one. You, you know. So you, you, you can make these arbitrary decisions. So you know what, I'm just going to look at a few days, try and solve a few little problems with the systems, make sure that when they do lose money, they don't lose too much money. Put them all together and see what happens. And you'll be really surprised at the results. Really, really surprised. Uh, I think we, we have been taught as, a, as, a, as an industry, you know, we've been taught by, by a lot of people about looking at very, very complicated systems, and, and, and I certainly have done that. Um, and I think that as you get a little bit older, maybe you get a little bit more confident to, to have the courage to do something a little bit simpler. 
Um, and, and, you know, so what I'm trying to say is that have the courage of your own convictions and, and, and simple stuff actually works and you can, you can do very well. Now, <coughs> um, old school, why old school? Well, I started just the, 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 the beginning of the, of the internet era. Um, you know, a few of the books that I read, uh, like the Williams book and Tony Crable's book. Tony Crable's made very famous because he bought back his old books. He, he, he published them and then decided they were so good, he went out and tried to buy them all back. But he, you know, it's a phenomenally, he's a very good writer, he's, yeah, I think his funds are doing spectacularly. Great. Um, and the most fascinating thing, sorry. Uh, I, I, I didn't catch his name. Don't Toby Crable. Toby Crable. Um, and one of the most uh, alluring parts of, of what he did is effectively enabled anyone with a wristwatch to be able to trade technical analysis. Because he, 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 he basically said, look, the first hour of trading um, has a higher than normal probability of it creating a higher alert. Now, nowadays, this is very true for markets like DAX, which have a, uh, a different open, so like a future open at seven, cash open at eight. And that still has a much higher than normal probability of creating a higher low in the first hour of trade. Um, with some of the other markets, because they've got 24 hours, the, the complexity has changed. But basically, the, the, the basic premise is still the same. You take an arbitrary decision, you take an hour, two hours, you know, 20 minutes. And, and that marks your starting point for trade. Um, and here we take uh, the first hour of trading as the original the original system told us. <laughs> and we basically define off the high and the low, the first hour of trading, we define our parameters for either a mean reversion moment or for the market to move away from the mean. So you, I don't have to tell you what to do with that. So you, know, you have a, a, an upper limit to your, your one hour, you have a lower limit to your, your other hour, you've got to figure out some way to tell you, is the market going to continue upwards or is it going to come down? So, Toby Craig will give us all that information. Now, uh, the problem is that when you try and use one methodology, and this is a problem with, with, with opening range breakout, I think as, as initial concept, is, it's beautiful, it works, uh, it's fantastic, but then when you try and deal with trends, and this, this is a system that tends to get washed out with trends, um, you, you're trying to overcomplicate and you're trying to solve a problem that you can't solve. And, and, and basically, you, you, by the time you found a way of solving a problem that this methodology is simply not built to solve, it's too late. What the, 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 the market's changed a little bit. Um, and, you know, you have to start from scratch. So now we've got a situation where you know, we, look at, we look at the way the credit will do it. So he had, he had two levels upon which he would define you know, what would create the, the conditions for him to either put a mean reversion trade on or to say that the market, in fact, is continuing for that period. Remember, this is an intraday system that could be there. Um, so psychologically, he's telling me that, or in this case, we didn't break out, but imagine this market break out. You're selling, he, he forces you to sell at the low and buy at the high. Now, this is something that most of us are reasonably reticent to do. You know, we always imagine that you know, we should be selling at the high, not buying at the high. Well, because the high is just the high for that moment. But I can assure you that you know, these breakout models uh, can capture moments uh, of, of, of strong move away from me quite well. Uh, intraday a little bit harder, but uh, not impossible. So this is basically Crable's, Crable's model. Um, any questions? Right, now, um, we said at the beginning, you know, we've got four conditions. How do we solve the opening gap? Well, this thing is when the boom shuts down. Well, a few markets nowadays it doesn't take 24 hours. But, okay, we are trying to give ourselves something that we can trade off before the market actually opens, or a level that we can trade up as the market opens. So what can we do? Uh, well, let's use the same, same idea of, of the opening range breakout, but let's use the closing range. 
rock and roll. <coughs> as crazy as they might seem, but you know, it's from six o'clock to nine o'clock. You have treasuries are open, equities are open, uh, the U.S. markets. So I mean, the markets thin, but you don't care. I mean, you know, the the, the Bund Treasury is not going to move that much overnight. You know, I mean, many times, you know, have we been caught having missed the Bund close and we trade treasuries against it, and then just invert the trade the next day. But, you know, you might lose a couple of ticks here and there, but you know, the correlation is reasonably stable. Right, so we've taken our last three hours of trading as our opening rate breakout. And I'm concentrating now on this, on this lower level here. And it, yeah, same, same rules, you know, if, if we get a, a cross of the, of the orange bar, which is a high of the two, two limits, we go short. If we go to a recross, so a cross backwards, to tell us it's a mean inversion. The or orange signal is telling us the market is moving away from the mean. The red signal is telling us the market is moving back towards the mean. Again, this comes from the book. You know, there's no interpretation. The only change I've made is I've used the last three hours of trading rather than the first hour of trading because I want to trade right away rather than having to wait for an hour. Um, but again, no, it's reasonably nice. Yeah, you know, six ticks there, eight ticks there. Out of the, uh, for an intraday trade, that is a reasonable amount. <coughs> if I do that, then I'd be very, very happy as a, as a, as a private trader. Now, how does this look? And going back to um, my, my, my origin, I started off with options models um, and looking at uh, delivered volatility and how the pricing varies between delivered volatility and, and the option itself. And I've always liked doing this. I've always liked looking at distribution of excursions. So here I've just simply taken the last hour of trading. I've said, so if the market moves through that level, yeah, we'll go long, just purely just to, 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 to get some data. Yeah? So that those last two blue bars, opening range, low range. I'm not talking about the system. We just want to, all we're trying to find out is what was that? What was the pure excursion away from the upper or lower level? Nothing else. This is not a, an exercise in finding out how many takes we can make. All we want to know is, is our basic premise actually valid? Or are we just, you know, making it up. And here we see, that in fact, you know, the, sorry, on, on, on the lower side, you have the amount of ticks and moves away from, from, from that level. And <coughs> um, on the vertical, you have the frequency. So, you know, it does move quite a lot away from those two levels. And if all you do, remember that you know, before the market opens, you know what these two levels are. You know them from 901 the previous evening. Right? And how much simpler does it get? So all we've done here is, is sorry, yeah, imagine. Imagine you, you took a position. You can take a position right away, you know, because you know what the, the levels are. Obviously. The problem is the physical exit. You, have, uh, you don't know how to exit in this in this exercise, but as you can see, it, it, it is relevant. There are big moves, and the moves are big enough for you to uh, to be able to uh, to do something with. It. Right now, so if you look at that, just this this idea, um, and going back to the idea of you know what's the what's the best DMA and you know, all these kind of things. Um, you, 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 plot. Okay, okay. Let's transform it into a trading system. Let's, let's see how it works. So your first plot is marvelous. Fantastic. I'll trade that all day. Thing is that you know, in this case, we were taking, we, we made an arbitrary uh, decision on how many ticks of profit we would take, and then just exit at x amount of ticks of profit. Now, I have this over here. On the notes. Well, 
Now, test of agility. What if we change our, uh, our expected return by a small amount? Um, okay, we could have some better results. What if we go crazy and we're really optimizing? Suddenly we have an absolutely spectacular system. But again, we've optimized it so much that, that we've forgotten that in the process of optimization, a tiny little change has made a dramatic difference from that to that. And all these giants change a couple of parameters. But as attractive as it is, it also means that it's extremely fragile. Because it takes nothing to get to a much, much worse situation. And that's a problem with, with a lot of modeling and optimization. Now, if, you, if, you, if you're convinced of one super system, you find yourself in a situation where you have to optimize. You have to find some way, some indicator, uh, some methodology that will tell you, you know, when to move your stops, uh, when to be more or less aggressive. The problem is that you're always optimizing on previous data. And when something does change in the market, and it could be anything, it could be regulation, it could be tick size, um, it could be opening times, I mean, it could be absolutely anything. And suddenly you find yourself with a, with a model which is completely unsuitable. Now, um, sorry, Alex, how are we doing for time? Sometimes, I mean, you know, back to that. And it's four parameters. It's just basically how much, in fact, it's two parameters. It's just how much profit you're going to take to the upside and do that, and that's it. So, you know, psychologically, you tell yourself, oh, actually, like, that's not really much of an optimization, but it is. Um, and, you know, I think it's a discussion for, for another time. I, I can show you some gigantic disasters, you know, of, 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 of those mistakes that we've made, you know, and, and we continue to make mistakes. Hopefully we learn from it, um, but it's it, it's an it's an unanswerable question. I think the, the process of optimization itself is, is very dangerous. Um, but if you test the optimization, say for example, you you, you, you run a, a model and train, you change a few elements to it, and it performs much better. Then if you go back and you say to yourself, okay, you know what? What is it? What is it based on? The two, three indicators, and you randomly change that. And then, because you've optimized the stock, for example, it's made your your capability to modify, say, an EMA volume a lot more, and yet the model becomes stable. Because you spend some time optimizing your stock. And once so be it. You know, but as long as you can move from, say, 200 to 150, 250, and your results remain reasonably congruous, then you only optimize your stock. Yeah. And, 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 and your stock is based on your capacity to, to your financial capacity to stay in the market, your psychological willingness to take losses. Um, but it also has to match, match your methodology. So, you know, we run, uh, and to this public, you know, we run a system that has a, a smaller expectation to make money than the stock it runs, which, you know, every book in the world tells you it's, it's, you should never do that. Um, and it, 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 it performs well. It's okay. You know, it surprised me. It surprised everyone. <laughs> um, so there you go. So then we have the, let's go to the middle bit. The middle bit, you know, by its nature, you think, okay, something like Cradle is immediately going to solve. It was built to solve uh, mean reverting days. Um, and so, you know, we quickly look at period of mean reversion and see that it's, as we expected, it's reasonably productive. Now, and this is, this is the, the point of the whole idea of uh, a collection of asynchronous, imperfect systems. The beauty of, of, of having, you know, these, these systems that are based on different fundamental methodologies is that they will lose money at different times. So the beauty is that when one is making money, the other one will be losing a little bit of money, but not a lot of money. But it's incredibly rare that both of them will be losing money at the same time. They're fundamentally 
different kind of systems. You know, they, you can, it would, something has gone wrong. The trend for an amino reverter lose money at the same time. And then you've got to get back to the trend. So I've taken the figures on purpose out of these kind of charts because no one concentrates on the drawdowns. Um, but, you know, people, you, you always have to remember the drawdowns because the drawdowns are the most difficult things. The period of drawdown, your trough in the drawdown is when you doubt yourself the most. That's when, if you have investors, that's when the investors want to pull out. Um, even if, you know, you know that you've designed yourself for a 10 drawdown, um, it's statistically stable, you've run it for 100 years, and your drawdown is, is, is 10 and you have it. You got, you, you're drawing down nine, and you know, there's plenty of people that are throwing the towel at five, let alone nine. Very hard to do. Uh, losses and, and, and dealing with drawdowns is, is absolutely, it's, it's, it's heart wrenching, especially when you see the, the systems not performing. But they exist. And you have to design for drawdowns. If you don't allow for drawdowns, you'll never be in the market. So if you look at the blue system on its own, we're looking for pretty spectacular drawdowns. But <coughs> they don't draw down at the, same, at the same time as the other two systems. And by the way, those are the three systems that we saw earlier. Um, so let's look at them together. And you look at the, the, the red, which is the basic arithmetic sum of the three models. Suddenly, it looks a lot better. The, the, the drawdowns of the blue systems are not as apparent. <coughs> you know, they're quite big. You know, remember that Sod's law says that you started trading here. Um, what was happens that? Yeah, actually, no, you probably started trading here. Just there. You had three days of confidence before you got issued the trash. Um, so, you know, it's. The red line is what you want to take. That's what everyone wants. Um, but doing it with one super system, in my opinion, is certainly beyond me. Um, and we go back and all, all the time to the collection of imperfect systems. Now, the last thing that I'd like to talk to you about is the fact that the, 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 the trading community as a whole, especially in real money in front and so on and so forth, um, they end up all doing the same thing. Um, you, can, you, you have fantastic stories of beautifully, you know, neural network systems and things like that. The point is that the entire industry performs identically. Now, if you as an individual trader can create two or three systems into this system, they're completely different, based on different methodologies, you will be actually diversified. Because all these guys, and those, those indices <coughs> of completely different uh, types of funds. And yet, as you can see, they all do exactly the same thing. And these funds couldn't be more different. Well, the indices couldn't be more different. CTAs, diversified systematics. But you can see it's the same thing. Anyway, there concludes the, uh, the presentation. Um, do you have any questions? Yeah, just a quick one regarding entries. Um, do you use the two minutes for the entries, or do you drill down further? Well, no. I mean, the, for for the for the example, we use two minutes. Well, I mean, the two minute bar isn't huge. You know, apart from the time that you you, you, know, you hit that brick wall, two minute bar is reasonably small. Um, also, you know, the whole principle is that you, you can still trade this by hand. And two minutes is long enough, it's a long enough time for you to be able to react and prepare yourself. I mean, there are plenty of systems that allow you to do complex stops and, and, and that kind of thing, even while trading manually. You know, various systems like chart trading and stuff like that. Um, so you don't need necessarily to be able to program to run something like a trading stop. It can be built there depending what systems you have seen systems that can be reasonably complex things um, on, on, on orders, on simple orders. Yes? Um, do you have any uh, suggestion for novice trader on a system, uh, on building up those systems? For example, what software should we start with and uh, <coughs> whether programming skills are prerequisite? Uh, if you can get the data, you know, uh, and the data is correct, 
It's not with Excel. There's nothing wrong with Excel. The entire industry runs with Excel. You go into every trading floor in London, you know, the guy might have, you know, hundred or million budgets for IT. Every single trader has Excel. Because Excel is the only thing that works. And you can do it yourself. Um, then once you set up a rule, you set up your functions, then then you know you can move to the I mean nowadays it's full. I mean in my days we had the trade session in 2009. Um, and that's it. Nowadays, I mean every everyone has some kind of I've seen adverts for for things where you basically do a flow chart and it gives you the money. But if you can create it in Excel, you can replicate it. You know? And also you don't need live data. I mean, you, you don't care about live data. Take take it. I mean you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, 2013, it was, it's never happened before, it's a disaster. It looks exactly the same as 2005. Really. You want to replicate 2013, you can't get the yeah, 2005 data. You know, it's surprisingly similar. Um, in terms of, you know, it's, 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 it's physicality as well, it's actually. But it's, yeah, it's, I mean, these, these things repeat themselves all the time. The problem is that they don't repeat themselves in the same order. <laughs> so, you know, but I think the, 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 the best advice I would give is still to look at a chart. You know, look at a chart. Try and, try and figure out the market, the movements. Because, you know, I've, I've, I've known uh, individual traders that just on their own instinct and knowledge, they can, they, they can outperform the most ones. And they do so day in there with almost no form of education. Of any time. <laughs> uh, if you trade, say the two minute chart, you will only focus on the two minute chart and not going to look on a bigger time frame, maybe. Why can't you take your life? Look, if, if you're trading this on your own, yeah, uh, and at best maybe you have a little bit of budget so you can buy some software and maybe get someone to code something for you, well, you can't make it too complicated because when it stops working, you don't understand why it stopped working. That's another big thing. You know, things do stop working. Or you get erroneous trades go through if you've automated. But if you can't replicate your strategy in a chart, you don't know. I shouldn't be doing any of this. Um, and you need to be able to, to, to monitor yourself. You know, things do go wrong all the time. You know, and, and so no fault of your own. Like a bad tip. I remember collecting Eurex data. And this is bought directly from Eurex. And every now and again, the, the tax would flip. So you'd have the price and the volume. And the, and, and the volume and the price. So you, know, you had an you know, 800 tick move in, in one tick, and then back again. You know, that kind of stuff can happen, in, 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 especially with, it, with historical data. Uh, you know, so, you know your, your data vendor makes a tiny little mistake. They sell trillions of bytes of data. They don't want to check it. So when something does go wrong, if it's simple, you can figure out what's going on. And, and, and more experience, more money, make it more complex if you need to. I don't think you need to. Uh, but please. You were saying earlier about the very varying the input for your, your indicator. Right. So you're saying that basically you would expect to change, you could change the input of your indicator by 30%, but you wouldn't expect much of a change in the overall profit and loss. Is that what you're thinking? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So keeping, you know, if we're looking at something as simple as that, um, you know, if you change the MA by 30%, you know, your entry and exit shouldn't vary that much. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's pretty obvious when you see it just as one indicator. Yeah. Um, add levels of complexity to it, and, and, and you, sort of, you sort of step away from the simplicity of every single element. But when they act together, if, if you change them by a small amount and the result changes by a large amount, you're over-optimized. You end up doing what we did at the very end, you know, yeah. where we took you know, the system. And I, I, I literally played around until the curve looked nice. You know, that to that. And, and I think there's six to the upside, eight to the downside, and that's 10 and 10. That's the only variance. And huge, huge, huge difference. I mean, obviously, this is a lot more attractive. Um, but anybody else? Well, the system. So can I just? Yeah, go on. Okay. Sorry. Um, I'm assuming we're thinking a day trading strategy. The best time to use it would be in the UK session. Well, so if it's on a two-minute time frame, and most people are at work, how are we going to walk things? So you're asking, what what could you do to trade intraday 
<laughs> in, in, in the EU session. Yeah, you're using it too many times. So you trade whatever session you're awake at. If, you, if you're coming back from work and you're trading, in the, and you trade the treasuries. Surely most volatility or day trading would be in the UK being the biggest foreign exchange market. Well, forex is different. Uh, but, you know, we're talking, you know, fixed income bond futures at the moment. Yeah? You have effectively two choices. If you want a reasonable amount of it. It's either the boom, well, the boom 10s and 30s. Yeah? Pretty much it. Um, you know, with the euro crisis, uh, all the Americans were trading off Europe. Um, and so Europe tended to, to, to lead. But historically, it's always been America leading. You know, so you know, the big, the big <coughs> opening gaps, we don't really have that many big opening gaps anymore. You know, I mean, now, again, with America improving and the focus returning back to the States, you're seeing more of these opening gaps. You're seeing more of, a, of, a, of, a, of an opinion forming in the US before Europe comes in. But for a period of three years, I mean, the, the, the bund was what everyone watched. Um, so, you know, trade, trade whatever you're awake. But don't try and force the market. I mean, you know, don't try and trade the bund at 6 o'clock in the evening. There's no point. You know, trade the treasuries. It might as well. Probably cheap, right? <laughs> Sorry. Well, to my question slightly, but I was going to say, do you choose the fixed income assets normally like this? Because you find the technicals to be more reliable? No, it's because I would have been forced to do this. Um, in my career, uh, we was, I was in, in fixed income. Um, and so we developed options models in fixed income and then future models. And fixed income, to be honest, is, is, is not seen as very kind to systematic models. Um, you know, people tend to, to move immediately to the US Indies and that kind of thing. Um, but so we, we were forced because of client rates. We were supposed to say, at the beginning, we only had one bottle of shots. That's it. So, Trend following the shots is pretty hard work. <laughs> it just doesn't move. And when it does move, it really doesn't move. Um, I mean, it's not as bad as guilt, so PTPs, but. Yeah, um, yeah so that's, that's why I chose it. It's a market I know. We've we traded it since, since forever. And it's a hard market to trade. Uh, yeah. But if you look at this year, or this year, last year, um, Fund still produced some great results. Now, I mean, that's that killed this market. Paris. And historically, that's just a great market to trade. It was a disaster. You now, you speak to guys in the States, some of the, some of the, you know, the, the big brokers that have a lot of systematic traders on their books. People that trade Russell, I know one guy, you know, exclusively Russell trader. I mean, a track record like a, like a 45 degree back, brilliant. Last year, absolute disaster. Why? I don't know. Can, can, I, can I ask you something? Yeah. So do you think high frequency trading has changed the rules of the game? It's, it, it, yeah, I mean, there's a lot richer IT people. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> it has changed the rules of the game. Uh, but I, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's, I remember when, when, when I was working in Europe today, they're spending a lot of money on, on infrastructure and things like that. And I think that it, it seemed like it was a game exclusively for, for the very large guys. The problem is that. You know, you, you suddenly had these, these very high frequency, smaller firms that came in, and they realized that in fact, simply by process, they could get stuff done quicker. You know, because they didn't have an IT department with 200 people. It's not because they weren't smarter, it's just they were smaller. Um, you know, technology was a lot more accessible, um, and they had funding. And, you know, even firms like that now are few and far between. You know, uh, in, in some of the, what's the most famous European African trade, RSJ, in, in, in uh, in the Czech Republic. Things have changed very much for them. They were Czech I don't know. Uh, I, think, I think life has a little bit of a problem with their clay, but uh, I think at one stage they said they, they were 40 or 50% of the life uh, short sterling in your rival market, which is quite good. I think they were quit 50% of the quotes, not the, not the physical trades, but the life will argue on that. Um, so, uh, still works. So fine. So a good market. Mm. There's not any lot of people will immediately uh, give up and say, you know what, forget this fixed income thing, it's full of high frequency trade, I'll go to FX. So, yeah. FX is a high frequency system. Yeah. That's what it is. Um, I mean stocks and things like that. Because apart from anything else, remember there's lots of models that run for legitimate reasons, not just for for the scalping of property and things like that. I mean <coughs> people reach a number of orders that I don't know have 
60%, 70% where you the index, and then we'll start trading the index to hedge. You know, that's, that is a trade at high frequency as well, but you know, it still has a directional element to it, and it's there on, on, on purpose. So, you know, it's, there's always an excuse why people will say to you that something's going to Things just don't change that much, in my opinion. And things get harder temporarily. Um, you know, and the natural evolution of things is you know, the ones of us who, who, who make, make more mistakes than the others lead the game, sometimes temporarily and sometimes for, for, for a long amount of time. <laughs> but on that note, then, doesn't the amount of liquidity dumped into the market for short periods of time skew price action? Sure. So much better. Yeah. Have a morning that takes advantage of it. You know, uh, our, our EMA breakout. If the market moves, you don't care why it's moving, do you? It's just moving. I just want to make sure that I have something, some kind of tool set that puts me into that move. And, and especially if the move, that's why I put that one single bar in. That's why I chose that day. It has one bar that wipes it out. You know, that's the, that's the classical killer. You know, whatever you're doing, if you're trading, you know, your rival flies, and you spend two weeks getting into a fly that's trading between, you know, I don't know, neg five and neg three for them, since, you know, biblical times. And suddenly something happens, and it's trading plus four. And it's taking you a week to put that on a position. That is, you know, sometimes things like that happen. You, know, you just have to try to get involved. Any more questions? Um, all right, since there are no more questions, again, I'd like to make the same announcement. I hope I won't get boring. But uh, for the people that have uh, joined without having um, been on the guest list, I would very much appreciate if you came and provided me with your name and email so we can make sure you're on the, um, on the list that receives out the invitation so we can again process your details, else we'll be, um, the venue security will not be letting people outside of, the, um, of the, the list we provide them with. And secondly, right at the back we have some drinks to help yourself and also some brochures regarding the MTA and the CMT exam. And um, we'll be seeing you again in uh, February. Thank you all very much. Thank you.